Hello and welcome back to Beyond Boards, a podcast dedicated to the actions and interests of skaters beyond skateboarding. Today is a special episode, a sort of inception episode if you will. I had the opportunity to sit down with Seifus Benson and Donovan Jones of the legendary Toronto-based skateboarding and sports podcast The Bunt Live. The Bunt started out in 2016, and today, as they are releasing season 15, they have had over 150 guests from all over the world, have done multiple live interviews for Vance, one of their main sponsors in North America and abroad, and show no sign of slowing down anytime soon. So here's my conversation with the Bunt gang, I hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you guys, honored to have you. I've been listening to you guys for years, uh, so yeah, it's an honor. Thank you so much for uh, taking some time to chat with me. Hell yeah, man. Happy to be here. Of course, man. So I was wondering if you could tell me when you started skating and uh, also when you first met, when the two of you first met. Uh, I assume it must have been in your teenage years. And you might have told this in, um, in the bun a few times maybe, but I couldn't uh, find the exact uh, story behind it, so... I started skating, I think in 2000 or 2001, grade seven, uh, with my best friend, Phil. We started snowboarding that year. And then when summer came around, we couldn't, obviously couldn't snowboard anymore. And we're like, all right, he had an old skateboard. Like, yo, let's, let's give this thing a whirl and try and go down the hill in your backyard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, then the next weekend I went to Montreal and learned how to ollie without him. And he actually learned how to ollie the same weekend in Toronto. <laughs> and so when we saw each other again, we both couldn't wait to show each other our ollies. And then it just it, yeah, it went from there. Cool. Obsessed. So dope. How old were you when that all happened, uh, Safest? How old are you in grade seven? Like 12, maybe? 11? Yeah, I think 13. I can't remember. Okay. okay. 13? Yeah. I it was so. before my birthday in grade seven. So whatever age that is. 12, 13. You guys are both like uh, in your mid 30s, right? Like 33, 34, around there? Yeah, I'm 34 exactly. and he's a year younger than me. Okay, yeah, so we're pretty much the same age. Okay. Yeah, so I was in uh, grade six, just started playing for a new hockey team, and there was uh, the coolest kid on the hockey team. His name was uh, Tommy Tarashin. He's a good friend of both of ours now. And uh, one week he was like, hey, do you want to you wanna hang out this weekend? Like, uh, I skateboard, do you skateboard? And I was like, yeah, sure, I skateboard, man. Absolutely. I'd <laughs> never had a skateboard in my life. But uh, yeah, that week I ran out, got one. He came over on the weekend and just started skating and never stopped. And uh, still friends to this day, thanks to skateboarding. Cool. So you guys grew up skating together. And um, at what point, so that came much later, I guess, but at what point did you start having a conversation about starting your own podcast? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think we had been skating for a few years separately before we met each other. There used to be only one indoor skate park in the in the city, Toronto. Mm -hmm. So pretty much everyone was funneled there. And we ended up meeting at the indoor skate park. And then I don't know. It was like our group of friends is crazy because it's like a bunch of small groups of friends that have just joined to be one large group. And like Seva said, him and Phil and me and my friend Tommy just became part of a, a huge group of friends who have skated together for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for the podcast origin, was that what you were also asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I guess you have to fast forward quite a bit from when we first met. But basically what happened was I remember Donald worked down the street from my mom's old house and I just started listening to podcasts at work. I was like doing manual labor and it was like a game changer for like getting through the day. And I knew Donald was doing similar stuff. So I was like, bro, you got to start listening to these things called podcasts. Like it'll just make work fly by. <laughs> yeah. And then next thing you know, we're both listening to a bunch of sports podcasts like all day, every day, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it just became like, yo, we need to start our own. And we, we talked about it for like maybe a year. I don't know, like just kept not doing it and being like, oh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. And then I remember what sparked it was the Raptors made the conference finals for the first time mm -hmm. in franchise history. And we're like, yo, we need to start this fucking podcast and like talk about <laughs> sports. So that was it was actually the Toronto Raptors that were kind of what finally got us to sit down and record something. Mm -hmm. And we still have that first recording. It's so embarrassing and so funny. We've never put it out to the public. Was that first episode with uh, Grant Patterson or was that a separate one? 
Oh no no that was our sec- was that our second Donald the first one was Morgan and then I, I think, think it, it was went, Grant uh, maybe Wade was second yeah yeah Morgan then Wade then Grant then Bobby that was yeah. like the okay. big four but we had done we had done a pilot episode before that yeah. that originally <laughs> was supposed to be episode one and yeah it was god awful it was uh, <laughs> luckily I've never listened back to that one but we just sent it out to like a couple of our friends and family and got some pointers. Mm-hmm. And after listening to that, we were like, "Man, we might need to have a guest on here weekly because uh, <laughs> I'm I'm not sure we can carry this podcast without one." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, so I I saw I read that uh, there was one podcast that kind of inf- influenced you heavily uh, called uh, Jalen and Jacoby. That's like a basketball focused uh, podcast, or or is it? Or I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah, it's an ESPN show. Right, okay. It turned into an actual TV show because the podcast, it was like underground for a bit. They just kind of did it for fun. And then I think it just had like kind of like a little cult following. And ESPN finally realized like they should actually put it on the air. It's a TV show now, but they still record a separate podcast segment. And yeah, it's okay. Jalen Rose, like retired NBA legend. And then his buddy, David Jacoby, who was just a like a producer at ESPN. Mm -hmm. but yeah we in the early days we stole a lot from them just in terms of formatting and stuff just because we both love them so much Mm -hmm. yeah it's a perfect mix of basketball football pop culture just everything that's happening in the now and two guys who don't take anything too serious so it was a perfect uh perfect format for us to try and follow in our beginning days for sure yeah 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 were there any other skate podcasts around when you first started? Because I, I think the the Nine Club, which has become like, uh, I guess, the biggest one at this point. Not the best one, but the biggest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so the Nine Club, I think, started in 2016. So I believe you started pretty much at that time. I think Tim O'Connor had his podcast going for a little bit. And uh, Anthony Shetler had a podcast also, probably in the early days. So were there any other skate podcasts around when you first started that you kind of uh, got some influence from or? No, no, I mean, yeah. the Tim O'Connor one, I was a big fan of. I remember um, yeah, driving to Miami with uh, our friend Nick Katz, and we basically listened to every single episode on the drive. And uh, yeah, we had Tim on. We got we got a lot of love for Tim. Like, he was definitely an OG in the skateboard podcasting game. And yeah. then, yeah, the Shetler show was also around. And the crazy thing with the Nine Club was... I think ours came out, our episode one came out like two weeks before their first one. But at the time we we were like, yo, we're about to be like the first skate pod because Tim wasn't really doing them too often. And, yeah. His were just sporadic. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So we put our episode one out and then all of a sudden we see the nine club pop out at the same time, pretty much. Torture. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah but it's a, a totally different format. I mean, um, mm-hmm. I mean, there are some similarities, obviously, but uh, first of all, it's video and, and also it's always there. Like the guests has to come there and I, they pretty much don't prepare their interviews. They just sit down with the guest and don't research him beforehand. So at least it looks like that. It looks like it's just a casual conversation. <laughs> and so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're definitely at the advantage where we can interview anybody in any place at any time. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, definitely a lot of differences, some similarities. That's why it was kind of unfortunate. Wish we had to start a year early, say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The disadvantage for us is not being in California. So it's like, yeah. well, yeah, we don't, exactly. we don't have budget to fly every guest here. Or else <laughs> it'd be super fun to do video ones. But honestly, we both have a ton of respect for them because they don't take time off and to edit yeah. a video interview every week. Like that can't be easy. Yeah. So you guys started uh, in 2016. And so you do season. So you do 12 episodes a season. Or maybe the very first season was only six. I'm not sure. But uh, I think it was 10. We started at 10 and then switched to 12. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so that was something you decided on early on. So you weren't like, okay, we're going to do one every week or two weeks or month or whatever. It was more like we'll do a season and then take some time off and then do another one and kind of go go from there. Yeah, that was a pretty strategic move, just knowing that we both work full time and this stuff takes takes a lot of work. At the end of a 12 episode season, you can kind of be burnt out a little bit. Like it's tough to do that with two jobs and our families and social life and skating. And yeah, so it was just a smart move. We wanted them to come out on a regular basis. We didn't want people to 
kind of have that Tim O'Connor feel where you never knew when the next one was going to come. So right, to have right. them for 12 episodes every week and then we get a break we thought would, would be the best decision for us. Okay. And how long are usually the breaks between season? I think it's it's not that long, actually. It's like maybe two months or something, three months. Originally, the plan was for the breaks to be one month. And then sometimes the breaks come and it's July. And that break runs a little bit longer, unfortunately. <laughs> or it comes around Christmas time and same thing. But yeah, we aim for, for in between one and two months for sure. Okay. So you've done kind of like myself since I'm in France, so I, I'm even farther away from California. So, but, uh, so, so you did most of your interviews like we're doing right now over Zoom calls. But uh, have you done uh, also a bit of uh, your interviews on site? I guess probably with some of your like Canadian friends, like Bobby DeKaiser maybe. Uh, was that like on site? Or how much of your interviews were done in presence of the guests versus uh, during Zoom calls? Yeah, they're definitely mostly over the internet but the first four the big four uh those are all in person those homies all lived here like wade lived super close to us when we did it morgan lived in the city yeah so it was was nice to to do those in person but it's just gotten way easier to just do it over video so now it's been a while since we've done one in person actually especially like since the pandemic started yeah Uh, now me and don weren't even together which i definitely miss but we live at opposite ends of the city now so it's just easier over video chat yeah yeah so you just mentioned that you have um you both have jobs i think donovan you just had a a kid not too long ago yeah so you have busy lives basically so how do you deal with doing the podcast in the middle of all this like how organized are you how do you how much time do you kind of take out of your week to dedicate to the podcast versus the rest like family your regular job and stuff i'd say it's a good portion of three days a week that the podcast will take when we're in season we definitely the interview portion is the longest Mm -hmm. we'll do that some point during the week which is always different but we do it in the evenings and then the rest of the podcast the ads the intro the post office and sports we record on the weekend that's as close to the episode as we can get it and then we spend one day editing we split the editing duties in half so okay. it's a portion of three days over the week for sure so it takes a lot of time but you know get up early in the mornings and that's when you do it okay this is kind of a random question but i was just curious to uh hear you talk about that uh the intro music of uh of the podcast kind of sounds like the music from tom penny's part and medic Mahdi. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I think I heard in an interview a long time ago, you might have mentioned it before, but uh, was that influenced by that part at all? Or is it completely just random that it kind of sounds like it or? Yeah, no, that's that's on purpose for sure. So what happened was when we first started, we were using all types of music. Like, you know how now it's all Ants 1 beats in between segments and stuff. Like, we're so thankful to have Ants who's that talented that he is constantly coming out with original beats for us. Mm -hmm. But in the early days, we were using, you know, Dipset, like you name it, and all types of rap groups and stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. But we once we shifted from SoundCloud only to iTunes as well, then yeah. we started we read that we can get shut down and like our whole account will just get Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Taken down if we're using stuff that we don't have the rights to. Exactly. So yeah, that yeah. was the big change where luckily Ants was able to bail us out. But for the intro song specifically, my friend Theo, so we were using the Tom Penny song. Like that's just such an amazing song, right? So we were using that song and then mm-hmm. we're like, oh shit, we can't use this anymore. And I yeah. asked my friend Theo. Theo, who also makes music, if he could make us a similar beat. And that's what he came up with. So that was super dope. Yeah. And I think like the, the voice of the girl uh, that does the intro is like an ex-girlfriend of one of you or, or something like that. <laughs> no, it's, it's my current girlfriend. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we broke up and got back together at one point and kind of talked about All it on the pod. The pod. <laughs> okay. But, okay. Uh, yeah. So that we took from Jalen and Jacoby. So I don't think they have it on their show anymore. But when they were just doing a podcast closer to like 2016, 2017, they had a British girl do their intro and it was like... And now you're listening to Jalen and Jacoby. So I I asked Colette if she could try and do a British accent and and record that. And I just love how she says Donovan's name. It's just so random. Yeah. (laughs) She's like Donovan. Donovan. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, She nailed it. 
And so you just touched on it a bit, but um, I was curious to hear you maybe talk about how you how you organized uh, between the two of you. So Donovan, you said that you cut editing in half, basically. But do you have kind of very specific things that one of you does and the other does other things? Or is it kind of just you decide, okay, I'll take care of this, you take care of this uh, for this week or whatever? How are you organized between the two of you, basically? Yeah, I mean, it's grown into like a full-fledged business. So there's so many duties that both of us can't oversee everything yeah, obviously. at all times. So it's definitely divide and conquer on a lot of things. We'll come together on the most important issues. Mm -hmm. But as far as editing, it's pretty uh, plain and simple. Safe edits the interview portion and I edit the rest. And that's a raw editing process, strictly audio. And then at the end of the week, we send that over to Ants One and, and he makes it beautiful, man. Yeah. He adds in every sound effect, all the music, like Sava said, all original beats. And uh, just make sure the audio sounds great. In the original first couple episodes when we were recording, he would be present for everything to make sure that all the sound was good. And then as it's gone along, we've become a little bit more comfortable. So he doesn't need to be there for the interviews. Mm -hmm. So now he can just manufacture that from home. Okay, cool. Also about like how you guys are organized, I was wondering how, how much do you, like we, I just talked about the Nine Club and how they basically don't research much their guests uh, prior to an episode. How much uh, do you research your guests? Do you spend a lot of time like checking out all video parts or interviews or stuff like that? Or do you kind of just uh, go with the flow and, and, and just improvise basically? We definitely put in some research time for every guest. I mean, we're just such huge fans of skateboarding that sometimes, depending on the guest, you don't really need as much research. Like if it's like a Rick McCrank, just, yeah. you know, those type of legends, like questions just kind of flow. We, we write all our questions down, though. But like if it's a younger person that we're not as familiar with, you know, of course, we're going to watch all their parts. And then what we like to do is also ask them for a couple of their close friends contacts and see if we can mm -hmm. get some funny stories that like only their inner circles would know to spice up the interview a little bit. But yeah. We, we definitely, the very least, we're going to watch all their video parts, you know, the day before or whenever we're coming up with questions. Right, right. And also, uh, so you have uh, some sponsors on the show. So I think right now you're working with like CHPO, Dickies, Vans, uh, Spitfire. I know that Vans has been for a long time. I think before Dickies, you were working with um, Brixton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, so so how early in the process of the podcast did uh, sponsors start coming uh, into the picture? And, and did they knock on your door or did you kind of solicit them? How, how did it work, basically? So the first sponsor was Time Bomb Trading, which is a distribution here in Canada. We had always had eyes to be sponsored by Stance just because of oh, yeah. this sports and skateboarding background. Uh -huh. So it just made sense to go through the distribution. So they were first and then say, was Vans second? Yeah, I think Vans was next. And I think, I want to say Time Bomb came on board, was it for season two or three? Like it was pretty, it was pretty quick. Yeah, it yeah. was, it was really quick. Okay. Yeah. So then Vans came on, that was kind of natural. I was riding for Flow Vans at the time, just like we're good friends with everyone here in the Toronto skate scene. Yeah. And we just threw it out there and asked them and they passed it along to someone who was in charge of the marketing here at that time. Mm-hmm who turned out to be a really good friend of ours, Bob LaSalle. And uh, Bob LaSalle opened up a ton of doors at Vans for us. Mm -hmm. And then once a company like Vans is your presenting sponsor, it just kind of flows downhill from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it's kind of a strange question maybe, but how helpful is it basically for you to have these sponsors? Does it help a lot financially or does it help more uh, as in they um, give you maybe more social media presence or coverage? Like how, how helpful is it for you? I'd say with Vans, it's probably goes both ways. Definitely helps financially. And they definitely have helped push the bunt just as hard as the bunt pushes the bunt. They've sent us on multiple trips to interview people mm -hmm. at live events. And we've done shows in London, Barcelona, New York, Miami, Vancouver. The list goes on. And that's all thanks to Vans. So huge shout out to Vans. Mm -hmm. Always pushing that on their social media channels. And uh, yeah, it's a huge help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, you, you just mentioned how, how you've been on, on trips and, and that you've done live interviews and stuff. So so you're an, uh, mainly an audio podcast, but uh, not too long ago, you did an interview with uh, Alexis Lacroix, uh, a skater from Canada as well, I think. Yeah. But that one was filmed. And um, you did also a live interview with Vans with um, two writers of them, uh, Albert Nyberg and Oscar, Oscar Condon from France. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, so do you, do you want to do more of these like uh, live interviews and also maybe video interviews or or do you want to like stick to audio as you've been doing for the last uh, five or six we years? We definitely want to do more trips. Like the I think we were on a roll and like <laughs> Vans was sending us all over the place. It was amazing. And then the pandemic hit. So it's kind of been on pause. Yeah. Yeah. We did that video episode. That was a digital house of Vans. But basically the vessel to do all these in-person live shows was house of vans because they're all over the world all the time and obviously those have kind of been put on pause other than the the digital toronto one but we cannot wait for for that to start rolling again i'm sure everyone listening everyone around the world is uh, looking forward to more traveling as we slowly get back to normal so yeah we can't wait and as far as video pods it's just tough man like dono said earlier we're, we're so busy with so much other stuff that yeah. just the thought of editing a video like it took us so long to edit that uh, that one video episode that we did with Addy. Oh yeah, I'm sure. So I don't know. We would have to put it out pretty unedited, I feel like, and then people would see how unprofessional we are. <laughs> we get to edit out a lot of stuff. Uh but um <laughs> No, uh, I don't know. That's it's something we've always wanted, but I just don't know how we're gonna make that happen if it's feasible. Okay. And so also at some point you were you were doing like comments over video parts. Uh that was like maybe a year or two ago or something. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you want to do again in, in the future or is it kind of done and, and moving on or? No, definitely not done. It's something we, we enjoy doing for sure. We did a lot of those during the pandemic when both of us were off work and had tons of free time. The podcast was definitely flowing a lot easier during the pandemic when we were at home full time. Mm-hmm. We were getting people on the show who had originally disagreed to coming on just because everyone had so much free time man so we started doing the video reviews and i mean definitely should keep them going we try to keep the the youtube channel going but uh yeah i hate to say it like it's like the worst excuse just to say that we're busy but yeah but it's true (laughs) this is what it is yeah 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 so you have uh regular jobs on the side i was just curious to know exact what exactly are you two working on on the side and um would you like maybe in the future for the bun to become like your main job is that kind of a goal of yours or would you rather keep the same configuration as today and have like a, a regular job and keep the bunt as a passion project basically for me i, I work in production on commercials I'm a production assistant slash driver. I'm not like passionate about it or anything, but as far as doing the bunt exclusively, maybe if we were like retired, it'd be like such a fun thing to just do on its own. But (laughs) at this point in our lives, like at least for me, it's like it doesn't take up so much time that even let's say even if we made like so much money that we didn't need a second job, I just don't think Mm -hmm. there would just be too much free time in a week to just do this. Like it would just not it wouldn't make sense at least for me to just only do this you know what i mean it's it's like the perfect side hustle if you will yeah originally that was why we started it to be a perfect side hustle i mean i think me and seva both had dreams of yeah like if someone if the right partner came along and wanted to pay us adequately to do this full time we could have the bunt and then maybe like a sports podcast and then move it to two episodes a week or right just add other forms of entertainment to it then it could become something bigger and full-time for sure but Mm -hmm. as it stands the way it is right now like save was working in in production i'm working in electrical right now okay that uh we just have time to do both so it makes sense to do both right now sure but we're never going to close the door and be like no there's no way but i'm like if espn came and (laughs) says jalen and jacoby's done it's d jones and the ghost we'd be like let's go it's time man yeah yeah yeah. for sure well fingers crossed just the way (laughs) the way it is right now it's like it's literally perfect like it it fits into our lives perfectly yeah Mm mm-hmm and I, sorry, I don't even, side hustle doesn't, I don't even <laughs> like that term because it's not like we're trying to hustle. Like we actually love doing this so much. It's like one of the oh, yeah, funnest yeah. things in the world. So you said passion project. I like, that's a better term. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you, you can definitely feel it throughout your episodes. I mean, I, I, I'm speaking just for myself, but uh, you probably get this from, from the listeners all the time that it's, it's very spontaneous. You can feel that you're genuinely stoked to have uh, just some of your like dream guests or just skaters that you really look up to. So, yeah, it just feels very um, you're not faking it or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I feel like especially in the beginning episodes, there were times when like for a lot of it, the first time we meet these skaters is when the Zoom call pops up. 
So, like, I just recall when Rick McCrank popped up on Zoom for the first time, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm, like, so unworthy of talking and asking Rick McCrank questions. Yeah, yeah. But you get so comfortable as the years go on. But there are still guys who, like, I would say, like, Eric Ellington was the same. Like, oh, yeah. when Eric Ellington popped up and we'd been doing this for five years already, I, I got butterflies all over again. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's no way that, that Ellington... And that, and that conversation ended up being, like, four or five hours. Really? He edited wow. it down, but like he took so much time out of his day to just chat with us about everything pretty much. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. All right, so I was wondering also when you're working on a new season, like how much in advance do you start doing interviews, and like how, how do you schedule everything basically? Because you you have so one season is 12 episodes, so you pretty much decide okay we'll do them from this day to this date. We need to get 12 different interviews and uh, within this much time. And so how do you organize all that? And also I was wondering if you like what about the order in which you decide to release the episodes? Do you do you uh, do it kind of random? or I guess probably sometimes you release an episode like the date will coincide with uh, maybe the release of a video part or, or a shoe or whatever something for the guests that makes sense yeah I'm just wondering how you schedule everything basically the magic number for us I feel like has been six interviews so as soon as a season starts usually when a season ends actually we're still kind of in the flow and sometimes we'll do a couple right away mm -hmm. and then we get used to not you know being out every week so the the laziness kicks in and then all of a sudden a month goes by and then we're like oh shit we should probably get back to this so as soon as we get to six interviews in the off season that's when we're comfortable starting again okay because in the fir the first couple of years we used to be so bad with uh like literally having no guest the week of and then having to do like stressful interviews like literally i think we did tj rogers i swear we did his interview like like on a, a monday or tuesday and it had to come out wednesday like it was it was oh, really? way too stressful so now wow. i mean we've learned from that but we're still not <laughs> we're still not perfect but now we'll we'll have six interviews done start the season and then it's like okay we have 12 weeks to do six more right but honestly i thought this season was going to be the first time that we were like really on point but I mean, I don't know when this is coming out. I don't think this is going to spoil anything, but we have Jimmy Gorecki coming out on oh, nice. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. And then we're done. So we're, we've are we already <laughs> caught up to ourselves. We have our okay. last interview also done, but we need three more. And now it's like, we're now we're on the same week. So it's kind of, we get too complacent. After we get six done, <laughs> we're like, oh, then, then we had nine done. And we're, then all of a sudden we just don't do anything for three weeks. And then we're stressing again. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll be fine. <laughs> We'll make it happen. We always do. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. You have a lot of experience at this point. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as far as picking the order, it's yeah. probably similar to the way uh, a TV show picks the order, man, or a skate video picks the order. Starting off strong. The first two got to be good ones. And then the best, the best for last, as always, man. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. We try. That's what we try to do. It doesn't always work out that way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the first two... You want to come out strong, and then the last two, you want to go out strong, too. But uh, mm -hmm. that hasn't always been the case, but for the most part, that's what we aim for. I remember Nick Trapasso saved our asses one time. We had 11 interviews out, and we had one week left to go, and we didn't have an interview yet, and we're, like, messaging <laughs> everyone trying to, you know, not just get anyone on. We needed, like, a solid name and hopefully yeah, someone funny. Yeah, a banger, yeah. And, and Nick Trapasso came through in the clutch, and he was hilarious. And, like, I thought that was one of our better episodes, so always thankful to him. Cool. And also, so I don't know how you work with the guests, uh, as in, um, do you have guests, like, asking you kind of what questions you're going to ask? Or even after the interview, does it happen ever that uh, a guest asks you to remove a segment, maybe, or that they would want to listen to the edited version of the episode before you release it? Does that ever happen? And what do you usually respond to that? Do you say, like, uh, no, basically, like, fuck off, or this is our show, we, we have full <laughs> control over it, or a more diplomatic version of that? But uh, yeah, how, how do you how do you deal with that, basically? Man, I'd say over the almost six years now, we've heard absolutely everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Everything you could ever hear of. 
Absolutely. We'll send the questions to people if they if they need it. Some of these guys have done so many interviews that you could ask them anything and it doesn't yeah. bother them. Mm -hmm. So pre-interview, we'll definitely offer up the questions if necessary. And there are some questions that are a little bit harder and might get a better answer out of the guests if they have some time to think on it. Yeah. Definitely for the live interviews, we give them the questions for sure. Okay. And as far as afterwards, that's definitely... Everything is up to the guests. We've never put anyone in a position where we're going to air this. You've said it. It's your problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can't do that. Our show is built off of everybody who comes on and lets us interview them. So we don't want any sort of bad word getting out there that like, hey, these guys put this out there and screwed me over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's never our intent. Of and course. There's been like tons of episodes we've made changes to after it's been posted. Shout out to Ants for always working as fast as he can on making minor fixes. So mm -hmm. it's whatever the guest is comfortable with. Yeah. Okay. And so do you have any like anecdotes of um, things that kind of really went wrong basically during the making of an episode? Like, uh, I don't know, like I'm just imagining, but did you ever have someone getting pissed off and kind of just um, leaving in the middle of a conversation or or maybe did you like forget to press record or something like uh, did, did you ever have any problems of that nature or? Oh, yeah, for I sure. Like there's a <laughs> laundry list of these. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, you go hit them with a couple of. All right, yeah. The first one that comes to mind that I'm still so sad about to this day, we interviewed Anthony Mosley a couple years ago, and it was honestly one of the funniest interviews of all time. We did it at Donovan's house together, and yep. uh, his girlfriend was just like, what the hell is wrong with you guys? Like, She could just <laughs> hear us laughing our asses off for so long, <laughs> and his rapid fire was hands down the best one we've ever done, and like, like our heads were hurting from laughing so hard. <laughs> But then this <laughs> whole nightmare happened where he deleted the audio of the rapid fire or something weird happened because he did the interview on his friend's phone and then his friend, like something happened and I think he just didn't want the interview to come out. But then like all these excuses started coming out and he wanted all these changes oh, and then okay. he wanted to redo the whole interview. So we have this entire Anthony Mosley interview. I think I even edited it. But it's just missing the rapid fire. And at this point, it's probably never going to see the light of day. But it just bums me out because I know that was literally maybe a top three funniest episodes we've ever done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. yeah. And so there's no way that she would release it someday or? I mean, maybe I'll. I've thought about that. I've thought about putting it out as a bonus thing and just texting him and being like, hey, are you cool if we put that interview out as a bonus thing? Uh-huh. But i mean whatever well maybe maybe one day we'll see i would love to just do the rapid fire over again but he was just you know i'd text him and then his phone wouldn't work anymore and like i don't know what was going on but he was just really hard to get a hold of mm -hmm. what about you donovan do you have any any stories that come to mind or um yeah there's a couple other ones we did um an interview in one of our earliest seasons with brianna delaney and she had mm -hmm was supposed to be recording the audio only, <laughs> yeah. but she was okay. filming herself with the iPhone. And it, she kept telling us that the iPhone storage was full. And we're like, it's not possible. It's just like the smallest little audio file. Like if you delete a couple of your videos, you'll have more than enough room. Yeah. And she kept saying, no, it keeps, it keeps going full. And then we finally came to the conclusion that she was filming herself with the video. Okay. So I think we did the first three or four questions of that interview like six or seven times so the ones that <laughs> finally came out was probably like she had answered those questions way too many times <laughs> um we had started an interview with yajay popson which was oh, gonna nice, be great yeah. but for anybody who knows like sometimes we'll have episodes come out where you can hear something in the background and whenever you can like the audio isn't perfect it's very annoying for the listener like no matter who it yeah. is if there's like a clicking in the background or a fan is on it's just terrible and for mm -hmm. some reason he wanted to record his episode on his balcony while it was raining and we're like <laughs> trying to explain in new like, york <laughs> yeah why wow. this like wasn't ideal and his like friends were there so we like pretty much begged him to go into a quiet room and he's he was at a party and our first thought was like why would you agree to do this at a party like it's a terrible yeah, idea. Exactly, yeah. So then we finally get him into a quiet room and I think he answered three questions and was like dude I'm over this. And at that point I think <laughs> we can say for we're over it too. We're like, "Yo, we'll just maybe talk to you another day, maybe we won't, man." It just didn't yeah. work out. Yeah. 
Okay, it was one of those. Right. He was like, "Yeah, like we'll do it. We'll do it another time." And I feel like both sides were like, "Yeah, sure. Like yeah. we'll just politely say we'll do this later." <laughs> but we all we all know this isn't going down. Okay, that's too bad. Yeah, he's a six skater. Yeah, yeah, it would have been good. We had a good interview planned for him. Yeah, maybe one day. Yeah, well, maybe maybe in a few uh, months or years uh, when uh, water under the bridge and stuff uh, maybe <laughs> exactly, it will happen. Yeah. yeah. And so, what are some of your like favorite episodes? I mean, it's it's obviously uh, difficult to select just one or two or three, but um, what are some that have been like the most fun? Which ones kind of stick out to you the most as uh, you've enjoyed really doing those interviews? At this point, we've done so many that I even forget sometimes because sometimes we need to like for whatever reason go look in the past, and I'll just like be scrolling through old episodes, and I'll be like, "Oh my god, I forgot we did Windsor James or Dennis Buznitz." Yeah. You know, sometimes. It's oh just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You forgot about Dennis; he was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but but as far as like some of the the ones that are the most memorable for me off the top of my head right now. Obviously, I got to go with Mitch Barrett because I've even re-listened to that whole one a couple times since. I feel like that's the number one episode that comes up from people emailing in or like commenting. Like they always just want another Mitch interview. Okay. He's like one of our good friends and he was just so funny. Mm -hmm. And of course, Fred Gall. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not too long ago, right? Like maybe a, a year years. or two years ago? Yeah, maybe like two or three. But yeah, my friend Phil, who I started skating with yesterday, he was like, yo, I need some laughs. Like, what's a good old episode I could listen oh, to? Oh, man. And I was like, Fred Gall, Fred Gall. And he he just kept texting me throughout the interview. He's like, oh, my God, the crack story. <laughs> like, oh, my God, the, the brothel story. And then he's like, the women and children. Like, that episode was nonstop fucking insanity. And Fred was just so chill yeah. and, like, casual, saying the most insane stories. And then a lot of people, I, f- I feel like a lot of people say when we interview our friends, those are usually the ones that they end up liking the most because it's just more comedy comes out. So... Some of the mm-hmm. Montreal homies, man, have been so good. Like Hugo, Hugo Balek, his interview was just one of a kind, man. Like the the story when he when he thought he won the lottery on the subway and started crying. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that that episode, but yeah. Oh, dude, you gotta you yeah. gotta take that one in. It's an all timer. <laughs> Which season was that on? Was that a recent episode or? Yeah, I think it was last season or the one before. So maybe two ago. Okay. I got to agree with the Fred Gall one to start, obviously, like the whole Mm -hmm. setup. I just remember the feeling that we had when we got off the phone with Fred Gall and it was like, we just hit the absolute jackpot. Like, it's going (laughs) to be hard to top that. Yeah. Another one I'd say would be Paul Rodriguez for sure. We had planned to do... Oh, yeah, that was very, very early on, right? Yeah, that was was a huge point for us for sure we had planned to do an interview with spanish mike in his hotel room and we knew that p-rod was sharing a room so we (laughs) we prepped an interview for paul just in case he was around or he was there oh yeah smart uh, move yeah yeah so we had one ready for paul and he was down okay another one would be elijah burrow who was our first live show here in toronto in front of our friends and family and he was an absolute rock star he killed that (laughs) i'd say Jake Phelps was a big moment for us as well. To be able to have Jake Phelps on the show, that was absolutely incredible and such like a special moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brad Cromer was hilarious too. And then I got to say, the guy we have for uh, the last episode this season is going to surprise some people for sure. Like he was in, okay. He had some of the best stories we've ever heard, and he shocked us to say the least. Like we didn't, we didn't expect the interview to go the way it did, but. Well, shout out okay. to him. Can you hint kind of who it is or, or would you rather not? Or uh, He's a Vans guy. So we've done a lot of Vans guys. There's not there's not yeah. that many left, but yeah, he's a Vans rider for sure. Okay. So yeah, so you've had, uh, I think, over 150 guests so far, uh, which is uh, pretty crazy. <laughs> but there's still so many skaters out there to uh, interview. So I was wondering if you would want to share who are some of your like dream guests that uh, hopefully will come into studio in the near future you know what sucks i feel like i've had the same dream guests <laughs> for ever like anytime that question has come up i've been saying the same ones and they just haven't, haven't been, been able yet. to get them on yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for me the top two that i want and i've wanted since day one are arto sorry and rodrigo tx two oh, guys that yeah we both obviously worship like so yeah many it, one day days one day and, yeah 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 
Absolutely. I'd say I need Rob Welsh in here at least once. We, oh, we've yeah. chatted with him, and he's uh-huh. adamant about the only way he'll do it is if we come down to, to California and see him. So we're going to make that happen one day. And then yeah. um, someone who we met in person and agreed to an interview and is just probably one of the busiest guys on the planet. Lucian Clark is a guy that I really, oh. I really want to get on the show and hopefully make it happen one day. That would be sick. Sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, one more that is a little controversial for us, but I feel like it would be so sick if he came on is Heath Kirchart. Oh yeah. And you haven't I had only him? say controversial. I, I you had had no. Him okay. No, no, no. It's only controversial because he fucked up our boy, James Hardy. I don't know if you <laughs> listened to that interview, but he like did some crazy shit to him. Oh, really? No, I, I listened to it, but I don't remember the story. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember it exactly, but I think they like, they tied him up and like, did they put baking powder on him or something and like beat him up? <laughs> yeah. Some sort they of did something crazy. Yeah. Some crazy hazing shit. So like, damn, uh, not that I want to sweep that under the rug, but I still, you know, as fucked up as that is that he did that to our main man, James Hardy, I still would love to have Heath on the show. He's just too legendary. Oh, yeah. He's uh, he's one of the best for sure. Yeah. But I'm not holding my breath because I think he heard that whole thing okay. on the pod. Oh, yeah. And then I think he was not about coming on after that, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one question that I try to end my interviews with is uh, kind of what's one of the most valuable lessons that you guys have learned from skateboarding and also maybe from this whole experience with the podcast? Hmm. Damn, that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll start with the skateboarding one and then Donald, you go and then we'll go back and forth for skating and then the pod. But uh, skateboarding, I feel like taught me just to kind of be humble I feel like there's a a weird thing about skaters where we're supposed to like suppress our emotions. (laughs) Like, you know, like Bastion gets called out or used to get called out for like going crazy. For celebrating his tricks. Yeah, yeah, I personally love that. But just being out in the world at such a young age, I feel like, you know, you're, you're just way less sheltered as a human being. You're all of a sudden we're like 12, 13 years old and we're literally just in downtown of all these big cities all over the place. And you just see, you know, you see homeless people, you see rich people, you see all types of people. And it just kind of, I don't know, I feel like it just forced this humbleness on all of us where you're just kind of like, I'm not better than anyone for any reason. Like we're just all getting through this crazy thing called life. Yeah. I think just being out in the world at such a young age kind of was helpful with that in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I just say that skateboarding and something we should all be super thankful for is that it's just showed us how big of a world is really out there. I'm sure we all have friends that we've gone to school with who, you know, they just stay in their one community or their, their one city their whole lives. And we've been so lucky just to to see so much and be a part of a community that is so big. Like, look at this. Somehow we're doing a podcast with you right now. And that's <laughs> it's all thanks to skateboarding, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good thing about skateboarding is the community aspect of it. Like, uh, like you can go anywhere and, and just link up with the local skate crew and they will welcome you like you're their best friends, basically. And that's something very special about skateboarding, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And now you want one thing from the podcast? We've from, the podcast from the podcast, yeah. I mean, I've definitely learned it even more so in the last couple of years is just structure and time management. Like we're we're both busy guys. And before we did the podcast and before I had my son, I was a pretty liberal with my time, you know, and now I'm trying to make the most out of every day and make, make all my time count, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. For me... Probably the biggest lesson that I learned that is like something I probably already should have known, but it was definitely reinforced by the podcast is not to judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, skaters, there's a lot of hate in the skate world. And, you know, it's not all like super gnarly hate, but just more like gossip. Like, you know, skaters are super gossipy. And is this guy cool? Is that guy cool? Mm -hmm. And often we have these preconceived notions about people and like there's a bunch of guests where like either I would force I would force us to have the guest on. But I feel like more so Donna would be like, no, we're getting this person on. And I'd be like, oh, I don't care. I don't want to interview them. Mm -hmm. And then we get them on. And then I'm immediately like a huge fan. Mm -hmm. 
it was just forced me to be like yo i need to chill on my preconceived notions right like i'll, I'll say one that was a huge one I was just not like a big fan of Hator de Silva. Oh yeah, okay. For whatever reason, it wasn't like I hated him or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wasn't interested in interviewing him. I was like, he's young, like whatever. I'm not the biggest fan. Mm-hmm. And then within like two minutes before we even started recording, I was like, yo, I love this kid. He's like the sweetest, nicest dude, and no ego. And we were just talking about Dragon Ball Z like before. <laughs> We started recording, and ever since then, like, I absolutely love love the guy. Keep in touch in the DMs or whatever. Like, so that's one thing that's been awesome about the pod is me, like, yeah, reconsidering not on to uh, preconceived, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. All right, so I finish the interviews with just uh, questions from guests, basically. Um, oh hell yeah! So I have one audio one that I'll play last, and all the other ones are written. So Sick. this first one um, is from Cairo Foster. What? You had him like a, a while ago, right? Like a yeah, few yeah. seasons back. I don't remember, but uh, he said yeah. uh, he said ask the guys to name their top three Canadian tray flips. Who oh, in shit. what video? Yeah, it's hard to answer oh, on the wow. spot again. <laughs> so not switch tray flips because I know you guys are <laughs> fond of that one, uh, but uh, regular tray flips. Do you have any that come to mind? And Canadian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a couple. Wait, sh- are we doing three each? No. Or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Donald, do you have one? Because I have two. We can just do, like, I'll say one, then you say one, then I'll say one. Well, what's your, can I have Wade? Oh, oh <laughs> shit. Okay, yeah. If you have Wade, then I need another one. I'll take Wade at Sans. Oh, okay. I don't remember that. Which video? Like a DJK what? video? Or? He does not. How can you not remember? That's so like the, the most the, iconic yeah, the one. The number one is <laughs> shit. Wade Desarmo at Sans in the line. Does Nolly back 5-0, tray flip, and then kick flip back, nose grind on the top. It's probably the best three flip ever done. In the DGK video. Is it in parental advisory? No, I think no, it's, no, in, it's uh, in it's in the KO video. KO video, yeah. Oh right, right, right. It's official. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I've I've definitely seen that. I just don't remember it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Wade Disarmo. Yeah, and then another Wade Wade Fife in North One. He does one of my favorite tray flips ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like off like a loading dock over like a little rail, so it's kind of like a flat gap to drop. Okay. Setup. And it's filmed backside, and it just like spins so perfectly oh, yeah. into his front foot. I'll say I'll send you the clip after this. Yeah, it's, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a magical one, and that was a video that we grew up on. Like those are like the generation a little older than us that we definitely worshipped growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Hmm, one more. One more. Who's got a mean tray flip? And ca- well, I mean, there's so many, but uh, maybe Mark Appleyard. Not sure. He has a good tray flip. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Apple's tray flip yeah. Commerce Ten, which was. A real good one. I don't know if we want to go with that, though. Yeah, no. That was sick, though. Appleyard lived in Toronto for a summer, so we all got to skate with him and hang out with him. And he tray flipped a 10-stair downtown and a 12-stair uptown. Okay. That was just hella dope to see. Um, oh, I got one. I love... Will, Will Marshall's got oh, one of the fattest go. tray yeah. flips. So oh, yeah, yeah. Will Marshall tray flip the uh, big pack in Montreal with the gun in his hand. <laughs> that was some <laughs> no way. Canadian classic right there. Yeah wow perfect cool <laughs> all right so this question is from i'm gonna butcher his name i'm so sorry but uh, uh coran gale uh, from england yeah 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 another Nailed buddy. It. so he said which top boy character would you be and why okay oh shit. he says i think dono is more the duchene and separate more huh? the sully <laughs> oh hell no <laughs> yeah you loose cannon oh. Unfortunately, I don't know the show, so I couldn't really know what he's he's talking about. Oh, he nailed I it. I haven't checked it out. But. He nailed it, man. <laughs> no, but the funny thing is, yo, I swear, so Dono is more of a fan of Sully, and I'm more of a fan of Duchesne. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah, you know what's even, what's even funnier is that we haven't read it yet, but this week, uh, someone emailed us asking who our favorite character in Top Boy is. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But Dono's answer would be Sully, and mine would be Duchesne, but <laughs> okay. KGZ thinks it's flipped. Okay, maybe that was done on purpose, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm not crazy though, like Sully. Sully's just emotional, man. Be? Oh, you know who I am? I'm what's his name? The guy who like Sully had the cap last season. Jamie? No, the young buck? Jamie, the other the other main guy. Oh, who, who with ends the up daughter switching sides. Yeah. What's his name again? I don't know. He's the best. That's me cuz he's just like pure like mellow lazy dude. Oh, get out of here, man. <laughs> Yo, I'll take it though. I, I'm Duchesne for sure, man. Oh my god. Yeah, money, <laughs> money on my mind. That's it. Pure business. <laughs> I'm Driz. That's his name. Yo, I'm Driz, Driz? man. 
<laughs> yeah drizz actually yo jamie yo that's my boy shit i still haven't watched the new season that's what i mean like you could Fuck. be jamie yeah jamie's a boss but no i'm drizz drizz was more my vibe the lazy homie who likes turning up too much and turns on his boys what the hell no not that part <laughs> just like this is like demeanor and like just day-to-day vibe you gotta see duchene <laughs> in the new season though he took his game to a new level man oh i can't wait i can't wait I need to check out that show. Yeah, I've never watched it. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's so good. There's four seasons, though. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of uh, catching up to do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes by quick. I think I watched the new season in a day, day and a half. Mm-hmm. If you do watch it, though, make sure you watch the original because Netflix separated it into two different things. So there's like Top Boy Summer House, I think, and that's one, two. And then yeah. the new one is another one, two. So okay. just make sure you look at the year they came out because there's, yeah, it's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this one is from Johnny Purcell. No, so. so he said, "Fist fight, full on. Who's winning, Cephas or Dono?" Uh, I gotta give it to Dono because now he's got like dad strength, so he needs <laughs> to live for his son now, so he can't go down in a fight to me anymore. But <laughs> before that, we were always tied, man. We've we've fought a handful of times growing up. Yeah like play fights that get too serious because like it's you know what i mean but i don't think anyone ever surrendered it, it always just ended up in a tie where we we're both gassed yeah <laughs> okay but he's got dad strength now so i'll tap out yeah careful <laughs> uh he also asked uh, how often do you really eat maker pizza <laughs> Boy. Yo, is this guy kidding me all the time i've got a slice in my fridge right now still i actually <laughs> have some leftovers i'm gonna work on after this as well <laughs> okay cool. all the time man if you're in toronto you need to eat maker pizza it's actually you know we don't just say that because they sponsor the pod it's actually we amazing that. pizza okay yeah so this one is from uh victor telegan from chpo oh sick so he said if you guys were professional skaters which brands would you ride for and why boards shoes and apparel damn tremendous question who wants to go first I'll go, I'll go. I, I'm i pretty much living the dream right now, actually. I would stick with Vans because what I've always skated. It's the best. I love Vans. Polar skateboards. And then oh, yeah. for clothing, I'd go with Bobby DeKaiser's new clothing company, Faces of Another. Support your locals. That's our guy, Bobby, and he, he makes some of the greatest clothes out there, all made in Canada. Cool. What about you, Seifa? Shit. I mean, can I even say it? Like, crew? <laughs> yeah. Plan B? And Nike. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, honestly, I, I love Vans to death. You know, we have a Vans podcast. I wear yeah. Vans literally every day when I'm chilling. Mm-hmm. But I also did ride for Nike for like 12, 13 years. Yeah, and that's like, right. I remember that. Yeah. I'm Blazer gang. And like, I have pretty fucked up feet. So once I have a shoe that, you know, feels right, it's, you know, so I'll still skate my Blazers for days. So we'll go with Nike. Mm-hmm. And then uh, been skating real boards. Shout out to Jim Thebo. He's oh, yeah. been blessing us with deluxe boxes for years now. And uh, yeah, it's funny. I never skated a real board like my whole life until Jim sent us some boxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now that's all I want to skate. So I'd go with real skateboards and clothing. Yeah, maybe just for shits and gigs, I'd bring crew back because I still <laughs> wear old crew shirts. You mean the <laughs> tight pants or... <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, the spankies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so very last question, and then I'll, I'll let you guys go. Hello, John Dahlquist here. First off, I want to say thank you for making skateboarding interesting to listen to. Great show. And I have a question for you. What are two people that you haven't had on the show that you want to ask something it might be a mythical moment, a taboo, uh, stories that have not been told, or just your most nerdy interest in a person or a situation. Curious to know. Thank you. Bye. So John Dahlquist of uh, Brigariets in Malmö. Sick. I would love to have Ashad Ware on the pod and oh, just yeah. ask him and just ask him how dare you (laughs) be so good (laughs) yeah (laughs) no i would just want to know fucking get in his head a little bit because i know or we both know having some i feel like the better a skateboarder is the more insane they are (laughs) and 
the more they freak out when like things aren't going well. So I would just kind of want to get in his head and know how much he freaks out and what like what <laughs> what that's like. Because I've heard a couple of stories from you know Robbie and Davis just saying that like oh yeah when he's having a bad day like he just loses it. Uh huh. And like I've seen that with like Bobby Morgan Wade, like literally all our our friends. The better you are, it's always been like that. The crazier they are, and the crazier the meltdowns are. Yeah. So Ashad being probably or at least you know arguably the best skater in the world. <laughs> I'm yeah, just curious what the sure. what the meltdowns look like. Yeah, that's a good one. What about you, Donovan? First one, I'd say I, I uh, and this is like another dream guest, uh, Tom Penny. I'd love to have Tom Penny. Oh on. yeah. Ooh. Just talk to him about uh, just to be like, there's so much to talk to Tom Penny about, but maybe that uh, we always like to go behind the scenes on sessions, and he had one of the most spectacular sessions of all time, over the rail into the bank and anthology. Oh yeah. Just to yeah, like yeah. see what he was thinking or if he was even thinking, you know, like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. one or the other, and then. Another guy, I would like to uh, have Rob Deerdick on. Just oh yeah, so It'd like be interesting. Someone who went so mainstream, but was also such like a part of core skateboarding for such a long time. Just to see like I want to say like the rise and fall, but just the like continued rise of Rob Deerdick, and he accomplished so much through skateboarding and brought so much to skateboarding, and now he's like just kind of vanished. It would yeah. be uh, cool just to kind of hear his story, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he'd be a sick guest, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think he's impossible to get, though. Have you tried? No one's Have impossible, but there's, yeah, he, he'll he be a tough cookie I mean, Tom to Penny is probably harder to get than uh, Rob <laughs> Deerdick, I think. Yeah, I think they're both up there, for sure. But yeah. yeah, those two and those couple questions. Speaking of Tom Penny and mythical, though, yeah, I would also want to go behind the scenes on when he jumps from, like, that rock oh, to yeah. the other <laughs> rock that looks like a death drop. Oh, and, like, the Flip like, Sorry video? Yeah, I just want to know what the hell was going on there, man. That shit was fucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's in Bordeaux right now uh, in France. So I'd love to strike him down and also interview him. So maybe I'll I'll have him on before you guys. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, man. I listening. would love to hear an interview with him. Definitely. No, but actually, yeah. I've talked with uh, Patrick O'Dell, you know, from Epically Later. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he interviewed him a, a long time ago for, I think, for a Arto episode, maybe Jeff Rowley's. And he said uh, he he doesn't think uh, Tom would do something like that. He's super secret, basically. Like he doesn't yeah. he doesn't like yeah. to be in the spotlight. So I don't think he would be, yeah. especially with me. Like I'm nobody in the sense that I, I don't have a famous podcast or whatever. So I, uh, he probably wouldn't see the point of doing it. But uh, but maybe you guys. I mean, you have a strong following. You've been you've been here for a while, so it could happen. Maybe you never know, man. Yeah. One guest that I'd love to see on your show is uh, PJ Ladd. I'm sure you must have. Uh, Reached yeah, out to him. We would love that as well. Yeah, he's he's also <laughs> super low key. I feel like he probably doesn't like to be interviewed much, but uh, maybe that will happen. Yeah. Oh man, keep trying. Yeah, good call. Let's send him a DM, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it can't hurt. All right. Well, let's wrap it up here. Uh, thank you so much, guys. It was an honor to chat with you. Thanks for taking some time. Hell yeah, man! Thank you for having us. This was a blast and uh, continued success in the pod game, man. Hell thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, John John told me uh, that you guys were doing something with him at Brigueries. Are you gonna are, are you gonna be involved in uh, in something with them? I'm not too sure. I'm just curious to know. Yeah. So Victor at CHPO is doing a sunglass collaboration with the class over there, and okay. they approached us, and we're gonna have one lucky student come on the show and do do a rapid fire in one of the last episodes of the oh, season. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so Sick. that'll be cool. And then we're going to go to Copenhagen, I believe, in June. Hopefully, check out the school. and For meet, Copenhagen meet, Open? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Meet the people over there. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I won't take more of your time, but thanks again. Uh, super stoked to have had you. And uh, yeah, continued success to you. I can't wait to see the next episodes of Season 15. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys keep uh, keep doing the podcast for a long time. Hell yeah. Thank you, man. Hell yeah, man. Talk thanks. soon. Thanks. That's it for my conversation with Safus and Donovan of The Bunt. Follow them on Instagram at The Bunt Live. Go check out their website, thebuntlive.com, to buy some of their merch. And support them on patreon.com slash thebunt. And, of course, go listen to their numerous amazing interviews on all the usual podcast platforms. Thank you for tuning in. See you soon for a new episode of Beyond Boards. <laughs>